welcome to the service for the first uh, mid-week Advent service. Uh, apparently, I for forgot to press the go live button. Uh, but I, I think most of the people wanted to see who wanted to see it saw. But anyways, since everything's all set up, I'll just go ahead and record this. Once more, I'll be doing this solo with no audience. Uh, the service should be about 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and begin with our opening hymn, The Advent of Our King. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may walk, may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray.
O God, you once delivered your people, Israel, from bondage under Pharaoh, and led them by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea to safety. Grant that we may so follow Christ that through the waters of baptism we may die day, we may daily die and rise with him and walk in safety through the wilderness of this life until we see your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes to us from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians. And the shifts which they took pride, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert, and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, and the jackals and the, uh, and the owls because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland. I give drink to my people, my chosen people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called upon me, O Jacob. You have not wearied yourselves for me, O Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes to us from Romans, the 12th chapter. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson from St. John, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the place, way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, we confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now sing the hymn, Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do you deal with tough times and dark times? Do you ever look at the last few years and compare them to the times from 60 years ago? Do you trust your neighbors like you did back then? Do you get the feeling like your values are the same as your neighbors? Today, or do you feel like they were more similar as they were 60 years ago? If that's if you were alive back then. We might ask ourselves, what is God doing? Is the erosion of Christianity today a sign of Jesus coming soon? Or will there be another revival period like in the camp meetings that were put on by Billy Graham or even Jonathan Edwards? Are the wildfires and many years of drought a sign that God is upset with California? Or is this just a time of drought that will one day pass? Through the pandemic, though there is the pandemic of COVID-19 and the lack of Christians leading in the political offices and the lack of Christians leading in our education department. And it seems like atheism and non-Christian religions are on the rise in this Western world. And we also might find a lack of godly love being found in our own communities. We might ask, what is God up to? Has he abandoned us? We might cry out to God like Habakkuk once had. In Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2 and through 4. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and will you not hear? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise, so the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth, perverted. In short, God responds to Habakkuk in verse 6. Behold, I'm raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, who march through the breadth of the earth to seize the dwellings, not their own. God had called a pagan nation to discipline the Israelite people. We might not think that a pagan nation, a nation that believes in many false gods, would be used to shape up God's people. But this is what God decided. Now through Isaiah, God gives us some detail as to more to this exile story. He tells us how he will use this pagan nation of Babylon to free them from their captivity. Isaiah 43, beginning at the 14th verse. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I send to Babylon and bring them down all as fugitives. Even the Chaldeans and the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Look at how God redirects his attention here. The question isn't about what you or any follower of God or non-follower of God is doing about it. God says that he is going to do something about it. He is the Lord. He is the Redeemer of his people. He is the Holy One of Israel. As a set of, he is a set-apart God for a set-apart people. 
And he's going to use a pagan nation once more, not to discipline them this time, but to send his people home. To send the Jews back to the promised land that they came from. Again, God reminds his people, he is the Lord, and he is the creator of the universe, and he is king. We ourselves today often look for a king or president or a person with great leadership and authority to lead us into some type of promised land, to make our place of living something to be proud of, something to be excited about. Someone who will lead his people to be a thriving people in a time of peace and a time of war. And God has shown himself to be that person. Remember the Exodus and the time of Moses where God split the Red Sea and yet at the same time he also allowed God he also allowed Pharaoh's army to run after them. God reminds us of this time through the next words that he speaks through Isaiah. He says in verses 16 and 17, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. In the Exodus, God was a commander-in-chief. He led the Israelites out of Egypt. He told them where to go. He also told the Egyptians where to go. He hardened Pharaoh's heart so this Pharaoh and his army would chase after the Israelites. And why did God do this? So that he could lead his, lead his army this Pharaoh army to drown. He destroyed the enemy. He is Lord over all creation. Then God says in verse 18, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. We might ask ourselves, Wait, what? Isn't this the same God who told the Israelites, do not forget? The same God who said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Yes, yes it is, but God is giving them something to look forward to. Though the Israelites have gone their own way and put their trust in other things besides God, and has called them to repeatedly repent time and time again, God has something good in store for them. Yes, God had delivered them from captivity from the Egyptians, but this isn't the end for God's delivering actions. He will deliver them from captivity from the Babylonians as well, and he has who will God send to make our next deliverance? How will he deliver or revive the community to bring us to be the faithful people of God? Only he knows. Maybe he will send out another gifted preacher to call people into repentance and let their hearts belong to God. Maybe he will do something beyond our wildest dreams. Maybe he will send someone who isn't a Christian to provide a way for the Christian communities to thrive. Or maybe the second coming of Jesus will be our next and final deliverance. The Roman Empire was at its peak time. All roads built led to Rome. And this was a great system for the governing authorities of the empire for they could send their political messages to each other with messengers 
as quickly as they could, they could keep the Roman rule in a tight order. However, once Jesus sent his disciples to make other disciples from all nations, they used the same roads to share his message, the good news of Jesus Christ. And many quickly became followers of Jesus Christ. Similarly, I can't help but make a similar connection with the creation of the Internet. The Internet was created so that government leaders could send messages between each other, even if one telephone connection that was established between uh, the two offices, government offices, were destroyed say, maybe by the Soviet Union. Now we have our internet for the everyday person to use. While it is often used to consume many, much spiritually poor information and often used to tear others down, it can also be used to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. This good news is the message that Jesus Christ, our King, has come. The Redeemer to save us from our sin has come. Yes, He is the King of the Jews, but He is also King of everyone who believes in Him, who follows Him. He was sentenced to die under Pontius Pilate because he was declared a lunatic. But he was truly the Holy Son of God who was crucified for all humanity. This abandonment led to the salvation of God's people. In this Advent season, we wait for Jesus' coming. We eagerly wait for the day of Christmas when we remember when Jesus came to us by being born from the Virgin Mary. The Redeemer God was living in human form for the world to see. But we also remember that this is a time to prepare our hearts for a second coming. The time when we will come for his followers, those who have taken to heart that Jesus is the Christ and that we are open to walking on the path that he lays before us. God cares for his people today. And, and in this, we can praise God. We may have joy for, though we don't always follow in his ways, God continues to seek us out. No matter how much we've made a mess of things or how tough life may become, God has not abandoned us. He has a plan for us. And you could say, he is doing a new thing. We don't worship a God of the past. We worship a God of the living. Who has a plan. We, well, we worship a, God, a living God who has a plan of deliverance for us in the future. He will show up at the right time. And so, let us wait for his deliverance. He will do something beyond our wildest imagination. Because God has given us our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, let us not be hard-hearted like the Israelites. For they heard God's word and his commands and ignored them all. Rather, let us sing praises to him and keep the faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, who has redeemed us by his blood and will redeem us in his second coming. Amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a seasonable weather, for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Mike Fleming, as he will go into surgery on Friday, we pray that it goes well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for those and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. Now leave with this benediction. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless and preserve us. Amen. We now sing the closing hymn. Let the earth now praise the Lord. <laughs>